Hello friends, welcome to my video. In this video, I will show you how to create an alarm clock using guide. I have shown in one of the other videos how to create an alarm clock using command line APIs of App Designer. Please do watch my that video. But in this video, I will restrict myself to the guide. So let's start. So in App, I go and create this App Designer. I take a oh sorry, not App App Designer, but a guide. And I take a empty blank figure, and yeah, I will keep, like to keep it simple. I will like to first have one box, one text box where I will show you my current time over here, and then of course this will be a label for this. There is a current time, and I need a text box where I can set my uh, alarm time. Okay, so here it comes the alarm time. I will need a button. Probably when I'm done, I will like to set it. So resizing and all those things you can play around. Probably I will also like to have one more text box here to put give some kind of message. We'll see later. So let's one by one set the properties of this text. So in the start, I don't think I need anything over here, so I just press enter. And please take a note of the tag, is text to. We need this when we are doing the callback functions. Over here, if I double click, and I set the property, this is my current time. And text to, I think this is fine. This probably I'll try to give it a little bit tough. Now I'm going to double click and this is my alarm time. Alarm time. So we are setting the string property of this uh, of these widgets. And for edit box again, I don't need because I will probably set these values during the opening function of uh, this UI. In the push button, I will I will enter uh, set alarm. You can also play with the text size and um, color and a font and all those things. I'm not showing those things here. And in this text, probably we'll set something like we'll complain our callback function with alarm is already done or not. So we'll say alarm time is passed. Probably passed. And this. Probably we can show it in, uh, we can do some coloring, we can show it in red and line. Okay, so I'm not sure why, why, why select over here it's not even allowing me to resize and that's that's something really weird so I'm not sure so let, let me try with tab key okay so here it comes this is the ok button so I, I was not sure why why it was not coming by default probably some of my view settings but it's okay and once you have done all these things I think I can just press close here and this comes here. I could have increased the font size, which I'll go back and quickly increase from probably 8 to 20. And uh, this looks good to me. I'll probably like to increase the font size of this as well because all these settings in GUI just advantage you can directly do here. Probably I'll go with 18 and same font size I'll keep keep it over here also for this. So it looks good and better. Now let's uh, save this figure so we can save this as my alarm clock. So the moment you uh, save the figure file, the respective .m file will also get created in the same directory, and we can run and see how it looks. Of course, nothing will happen right now because everything is uh, no callbacks, no coding has been done. So now let's start doing the coding. So in the opening function, so this is my output function if you just scroll 
through the dot m file so first function will be the main function which is called and from there all the respective functions are called so you should better try to go to this opening function and over there you can probably uh, so okay so let's let's set the strings of these two the current time so we'll set uh, the properties and we can take the handles to that particular uh, widget so the uh, tag which we show uh, so earlier will come into the handles and you can see the uh, tag was text to if you have forgotten you can just quickly go back and see there and what we want to set is a string uh, parameter the property which we want to set a string and what we want to set is the current date time so date time there is a, a command called date time and we can use this and we can use the parameter now what is the date time now and that should be shown here and but but this will return me a value in the date class so we have to return it uh, convert it from date to string format so date str we can use this api and yes and the same thing we can do for the other edit box as well so we go to so I honestly speaking I don't remember what was the edit box so we can uh, quickly verify so edit the tag is edit one here so I will have to use edit one so edit one string and I think most of the other stuff I keep saying of course you may be feeling surprised that it should have been the uh, alarm time and not the current time but just to start with, I am just putting a, a current time and later on I will give an option for the user to set the alarm time. Yes, looks good. So current time came, of course it's not increasing that we will do now uh, in the callback. That how we can make sure that it increases with the uh, timing. So I go, I close this and then go back to my code. So after opening function, of course and probably one more thing we can do is, okay, uh, probably I was thinking of uh, switching it off by default but that that part will do later so this is my push button callback that's first button you can also if you don't know where your callback is you can what you can do is just right click over here and go to view callbacks and uh, I think I think this should do yeah this will bring it to you so whenever this button is pushed it will come to this particular function in this and what we can do over here is uh, our first task is to get the alarm time and see whether alarm time is still valid or not. So let's get alarm time into a string format and that we can uh, get from this edit box whatever the user has set once he writes it and then sets he will get that uh, alarm time and uh, that we can get from handles dot edit one that is a tag of this and what we need is string whatever the value is set there so once we get this but i think we should uh, change it from the string format to the date vector format because that is what we will need later on to compare it with the current time okay so now we have a date vector in uh, terms of alarm time and now we can compare this alarm time whether it is already valid or that time has passed so that you can do using probably uh, there is a command called elapsed time e time and in this we can use this al alarm time and what I, whatever my current time is it will come from clock so this clock is another built-in api of uh, matlab which returns you the current time in a vector format that date vector format that's why i changed the previous string into a date vector format in alarm time and this I can compare whether this is uh, negative or not so because if it's negative then that means uh, my current time clock time is higher than the alarm time if it's that then probably I would like to display my this uh, widget so by default I will make the visibility off and <coughs> I will set this text 5 on if my condition meets so I just 
close you save it and of course when you save it something gets updated so yeah I will set the again I will take the handles here mm -hmm. uh, handles dot and I do I think it was text five and I have to set the visible property visible and I make it on so and, and, and also I think I can do a return over here because yes so if you want to quickly check this part of the code let's let's play this and see what is happening so if I click it came here perfect so this is the way I wanted also this alignment is not uh, correct so I will just shift one of these boxes either right or left I think I like to shift this box a little bit on the left side yes oh, yes this should be fine and I save this I close my previous run okay so this is working fine now what we have to do is if this condition is not met then we have to make sure that my timings are updated in these two boxes not of course only in this box so for that what we'll do is we'll compare whether my elapsed time between these two is greater than zero whether it's positive or not so until till it's positive we have to we can keep doing uh, our timing so we compare with greater, greater than zero but probably i would like to take some buffer here so 0 0.5 seems to be a good buffer because I am not sure to what precision level this ellipse time will calculate if it calculates till 0 that's well and good but I, I prefer to take some kind of uh, precision of 0.5 seconds that's I think fine and if that is done so then I will have to probably repeat what I did in the top I will have to set this I have to update this uh, timing uh, with the date and time what is current and to refresh the, our uh, uh, figure window, we have to do draw now. And that's all, I think. That should be fine. And once this condition, it will keep on looping until both the this current time doesn't reach alarm time. But what if this alarm time is reached by current time? Then in that case, we have to play some sound, some kind of alarm. So for that, I have already got a file called beep.mp3 it's a kind of beeping sound it will create you can feel free to get any kind of mp3 with your favorite music or something and you can put it here so I just uh, do an audio read for this mp3 file beep.mp3 and then I do a sound to get a sound out of it basically to play this is the command in which matter plays whatever the audio we have got in the fold, uh, in the variable y so looks good now let me just quickly run this and see what happens so if i set it to say for example 3 okay so it it is going on and on and on it will go till uh, for almost a minute and once it reaches that point, it will uh, uh, play the sound. And till that time, it is in inside this while loop. So your uh, MATLAB will be busy, is what I guess. If so, if you go back here and see, it's busy. So best way will be, of course, to create an exe out of it. You can create an execut executable if you have the uh, respective product from uh, MathFox and then you can create an exe and run this as an independent tool in your uh, machine or something and then it just runs in the background and whenever this time reaches it will just play that uh, beep sound so just it's about to reach and let's see if it plays or not so i could not hear it probably there was some background music also playing so let me first pause that background music Yes, now I have paused it music and now I come back here and probably set it as uh, 4 and 
Let's start the alarm again. So in another 10 15 uh, seconds, I expect that beep sound should start coming. 13, 14. I think my volume was low, that's why you couldn't hear it last time. Yeah, I, I hope it's audible. And uh, yes, so it runs and it uh, stops because after this we are just uh, exit, exiting our uh, code. And let's see what, what is this, this part of the code which we have done that if condition. So if no, if I press it again, because now the current time would be somewhat much higher than what we set it over here. So a long time pass. Probably what we can do is we can also quickly set uh, in my textbook what's uh, my current time so that people know at what time uh, my current time was that we pressed it and if we run it again so see so the alarm time set is 4.59 and the set uh, current time is so this will appear but if you say for example if you set something around 15 and do it quickly Oh, okay, I just missed it by a few seconds. So I'll put 25. Okay, I was expecting it to uh, come here in the while loop and uh, start uh, reading the going through this loop. And let me see why it is not happening. Probably we have set it to on. And I think we should have set it to off also over here. So that is what is not happening here. If we come here and do this off and now if we set it again so my current time is of course too much higher so probably I close this and I start a new session of my alarm clock and so first I bring this up and now I try to set it 20 seconds see if okay so this went off here and this is happening yeah so I uh, so it went into this for while loop and it has <laughs> our alarm is ringing okay so that's all so this sounds good we can also create an app out of it very quickly probably I can show you very quickly in this video itself how to create an app if you want and uh, so it comes into this app tab on the top and you have to just create a package or uh, click on this package the app and go here and uh, you can probably add files directly over here or main file add, add main file and this is your main file mm -hmm. and app name automatically text you can of course customize all these things and do a package and once that package is done uh -huh, you can just open this you can just open this so it comes here is in the same uh, directory on the top or you can even uh, I think close this window and double click here and install and it should go and sit on the top and if you click here function in the control so entry point change control. okay so we should change it to something else so say for example we change it to our uh, work directory and uh, ring it again so it come up so, so this time it's, it's the alarm of uh, from the app and not your uh, current code yeah okay so perfect thanks for watching my video do watch my other video in which i have explained how to create the same alarm clock using command and apis for app designer which is a more uh, newer tool and please do like my video or comment or subscribe if you have uh, if you like my video thanks for watching and have a nice day bye